Welcome to the DK Custom Products channel. My name is Kevin. This is Dwayne. And today we're doing the last video in our multi-part series on trike suspension and ride heights. If you have not looked at the previous videos that we've done, we'll put them up in the corner here. There'll be one, and then a few, about 10, 15 seconds later, there'll be another one up there. Right, and just a brief synopsis of what those videos were. We collected some data on various trike models, you know, taking measurements, um, and that was the first video. Second video, we went into an explanation of why there are different ride heights when it's the same exact model. And uh, so in this video, we're gonna talk about what you can expect when you're upgrading those OEM suspension components. So the first thing is that a lot of people pre-19 had trikes that were dragging right. the tail end. And so lift kits from 2009 all the way through 2018, lift kits were very important. Right. And, and then you can talk about some of the things that you've run into with the 19, 20, 21, and 22 people and 23 people now on uh, ride heights with or without a lift kit. And then, of course, there's the whole thing of the low profile tires versus the non low yeah. profile tires. And so you get questions every day from people about the ride heights. So why don't you discuss a little bit about not only factory suspension mm -hmm. versus aftermarket suspension shocks and the factory shock mounting brackets versus lift okay. kits and comfort uh, um, mounts. All right, sure. So uh, as Kevin said, 2000, 2018 and prior models, they had the droopy air shocks in the rear. Necessity breeds innovation. So we had the lift kit to lift that rear end back up. Now our lift kit, otherwise known as the comfort lift, you know, it also increases the cantilever angle of the shock. So it gives it more of a plush ride quality in addition to lifting it up. Now reasons you may want to lift it up because you have those big four inch slip ons on the rear and you know, your driveway might be at an incline or you want to load it onto a trailer and you're just dragging your pipes. So lifting it gives you more ground clearance, more plush ride quality, makes it easier to steer as well. Puts more leverage on the front end of the bike and it steers much easier. All right, so that's the air shock models. Now, there has been a misconception that in 2019, Harley started lifting the rear. They didn't actually lift the rear, they just swapped over to really stiff coilover shocks because for a lot of people, those air shocks, I think they did it because they were very inconvenient to keep at an optimal PSI. You had to constantly air them up and they would leak down overnight. So they went to the coilovers that have the hand adjustment assembly under the seat. Seems convenient, but they're not comfortable at all. Like we tried to like them, we tried to make them ride well, and you can add the comfort lift to those coilover shocks and it will give you a more plush ride quality. But for a lot of people out there, it's just not enough. So then you get into upgrading those coilover shocks with a premium coilover shock. Now the OEM shock length, 13 inches. So you have options there. You can go back with another 13 inch shock. Of course you want to go towards an improvement. You don't want to take a step sideways. You want to take a step forward. You want to get more suspension travel. You want to get a better ride quality overall. And that's going to come from, you know, most any up, most any aftermarket is going to be an upgrade. And it, you know, that's the legends. That's the old ones. It's definitely the pro action and certainly the DK next gen shock. And the twin adjustable. Yeah, and the twin adjustable shock. Yeah. So anything is really an upgrade over factory. And when you start upgrading, you're starting to look at different manufacturers providing different suspension travel links. And as a general rule of thumb, when you have your shocks set up to where they would be perform the best, they're gonna sag about a third of that overall travel length. Well, if the OEM shocks have very minimal travel, they're also gonna have very minimal sag. They're 13 inches. An aftermarket shock has an excessive amount of travel, it's gonna have a little more sag. They're also 13 inches, but they're gonna sit a little lower. And what a lot of people don't understand is that you can't really have a plush, comfortable ride and have a jacked up rear end on the trike. It just don't work. You know, right. when you add those taller, softer shocks, they're gonna sag a little more. Think off-road suspension. You know, think of the way the swing arm articulates on an off-road suspension. It doesn't stay jacked up in the rear. There's constant movement there. So what you've just said, Dwayne, is, is that with the air shocks, they have some sag. Yep. 
With the OEM air shocks, they have some sag. With the OEM coilovers, they have no sag. So they do not provide a good ride. When you go with any aftermarket shock, Progressive, Owens, Next Gen, Twin Adjustable, uh, Pro Action, uh, when you go with those shocks, they have sag. They have a 25 to 30% of the travel sag. When you go with the Next Gen that has four inches of travel, it's going to have even more sag than, say, a shock that only has three inches of travel. Right. You can't have, you can only put the trike up so high with no sag, you know, when the shock is fully extended. So when there's sag, it's going to sit lower. It's just going to sit lower. So that's what you're saying. That's right. But what about the 14-inch right. shocks? And, and this, this, the 14-inch shocks are what spurred this entire video series because people are oftentimes confused that, hey, this 14-inch shock, it's a full inch taller than my OEM shocks. How come I'm not sitting a full inch higher than stock? Because it just doesn't work out that way. You know, you have maximum travel out of that 14 inch shock and they're gonna sag down to about the OEM ride height, even though overall on a bench, they would be a full inch taller. When you install them, when you put that weight on them, they're gonna sag. Now, you can add a little extra preload, but as you do that, as you increase ride height, ride quality will suffer. Because it's just going to be stiffer. That's right. So if you want to get the, if you want to maintain a jacked up rear end, and that's your goal, you would install a lift kit on the OEM shocks. Like if 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 ride height is your primary goal, lift kit on the OEM shocks is your only option, because you can't upgrade those shocks and expect it to be jacked up in the right. ass end. And people might ask, what, what is sag? Why is sag? And that's a whole other thing. You can Google it, but. The really short answer is if a shock has four inches of travel and when it's sitting with you on the bike, you want that suspension to be partially compressed because then if you're riding along and you hit a dip in the road, you want the tires to be able to go into that dip, but you want the trike to stay level. Exactly right. Well, if the shocks are fully extended, if there is no sag, when the tires drop down, the whole trike's going to drop down and you're going to feel that bump. You have to have some of the travel already compressed when you're riding so that when you hit dips, those tires can go in, but the trike can stay the same. But you can see if the shock's fully extended mm -hmm. or if it's extended with only an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch of uh, compression, and then you hit a dip that's an inch deep, you're going to <laughs> yeah. you're going to bounce right. because there's the shock can't go any taller because it's already at its full ride height or close to its full ride height. Whereas if on a four inch travel shock, it's compressed an inch, inch and a quarter. Then when you hit that inch dip in the road, mm -hmm. the trike's going to stay level because the it's just going to drop right. out. The tire's just going to drop into the hole, and the trike is not going to change at all. So you're going to hit all those bumps. You're not even going to feel them. Right. And and to further further clarify something that you're probably asking yourself, well, why not just lift the 14 inch shocks? Well, because when you lift that trike in the air and you attempt the installation, that swing arm is only going to drop until it hits the exhaust. It's not dropping any further. That's the clearance you have. And any of you guys that have installed the 14 inch shocks with the comfort mounts, you'll notice you're maxed out on clearance. Right, like right. It's, there's just so much space under there and there's just not space right. to have Yeah, we would love more. to be able to lift, lift it and install a 14 inch shock. We would love that. You just don't have the clearance on these Harley trike models. Here's another aspect to think about when you're considering your trike's ride height. Now, some of the data we collected was on your 2019 trike. That 2019 trike has 16 inch rear tires, just like a 2016 does. Ball bit, you have different suspension, same rear wheel setup. Now, the center of the hub to the ground on a stock trike, 12 and 3 eighths. The center of the hub to the ground on your trike was 12 and a quarter. So why is there a difference there when it's the same exact tire, same exact wheel size, everything because apples I'm, to apples? Because the, uh, tires on the 16 that you mentioned were at 26 psi in the tires mm -hmm. whereas i run 2021 20, in my mm -hmm. tires so they're compressed a little 
And we have a whole video, a whole video. that we put up here on why 26 PSI is not the correct PSI to run in your rear tires. And of course, what is the correct PSI by the people who designed the trike. And it just gives a better ride, but it also makes everything sit exactly a little right. bit lower. Exactly right. So when it comes to rear suspension on these bikes, there's always a give and take. You can increase ride height, you can decrease ride quality or vice versa. So always do your research, kind of figure out what works best for you. We're happy to help you out if you have questions about what your ride height may be or what you're wanting it to be. Or if you, you know, if you want a better ride quality overall, completely negating ride height, which is what we recommend. You know, you get a good ride quality, you're not gonna care about the ride height. Yeah, and you know, you don't want it to be dragging its ass and it won't be even with aftermarket. And you're talking a quarter of an inch, uh, uh, three eighths of an inch difference. That's not something that most people see. Where you see the difference is when it's like an inch and a half difference. That's you know? right. That's right. And so, um, but here's the thing: even with the air at 26 psi in the rear tires, even with coilover shocks with no sag, you're still going to hit. You be able. There's still going to be bumps that you're going to drag your pipes on. Yeah. You're never going to be able to jack it up high right. enough that you're not going to drag your pipes on anything. You just want it to sit level and have the best ride quality. And there's always going to be bumps that you're going to have to ride over sideways at an angle so that it doesn't scrape on a really big yeah. slowdown bump. That's right. So we hope uh, this, all of this information helped you guys better understand uh, the variances in trike ride heights. Uh, but if you have any questions about anything at all you've seen in this video or the previous videos, leave us a comment or shoot us an email to support at dkcustomproducts.com. And again, if you have questions about obtaining a certain ride height on your trike, man, always give me a call. I'd be happy to help you out. Y'all ride safe out there.